In survival, it's very difficult to create because all the blood flow goes to the hindbrain with those emotions and away from the forebrain. And you are prone to react. And when those chemicals turn on, there'll always be a gap between the way things appear and the way things really are. It will alter your perception. And if you react during that chemical change, you'll always say the same thing. I should have never said that. I should have never done that. I should have never thought that. I should have never sent that email. Because now you're acting like an amped up animal with a big memory bank. When you teach people how to no longer live in the future or live in the past, trying to predict their future, re return to the familiar past, and you teach them what it means to be in the present moment, and they labor for that present moment, when they finally hit that sweet spot, something amazing happens. You get creative. Because my definition of creation is when you forget about yourself. You are so present in the moment, you're no longer a face. You're no longer a skin color. You're no longer a gender. You're no longer a sexual preference. You're no longer a diet. You're no longer a profession. You're no longer a wardrobe. You're no longer a sports car. You're no longer a name. You are nobody. No one, no thing, nowhere, in no time. And that is the moment you are pure consciousness. And that elegant moment where you are pure consciousness, that is the moment you walk through the door to the quantum field. And after looking at 4,500 brain scans, if you can teach a person instead of narrowing their focus to open their focus and focus on nothing, space, focus on energy, all of a sudden those different compartments of the brain that were once subdivided, they begin to unify, they begin to synchronize. The front of the brain starts talking to the back of the brain. The right side of the brain starts talking to the left side of the brain. And all of a sudden, the brain is going into psychic union because what sinks in the brain links in the brain. And all of a sudden, the person feels more like themselves than it had in a long time. We've seen this in real time in our meditations, watching it, people do it. And now we're able to predict it when it's going to happen. And when that person is no longer thinking and feeling in the same cycle, they're gone. They're elsewhere. They are a thought in possibility. That's the moment their consciousness merges with a greater consciousness. That's the moment the subjective consciousness merges with the objective consciousness, the field. And they begin to merge together. And when they come back, they take a piece of it with it. They become more loving. They become more giving. They become more willful. They become more conscious. They become more mindful. Its nature becomes their nature. Its mind becomes their mind. And when we see this happen, we can look at the, the dimensional picture of the brain. And all of a sudden, we start to see it synchronizing. The two halves are coming together. The unity of polarities, the unity of duality is wholeness, is love. And at the exact time that brain starts going into psychic union, that energy from these centers moves right into the heart. And boom, the field around the body can go up to nine meters wide. Now they feel connected to something greater, no longer separate from possibility. They're no longer focusing on matter and objects and things. They've taken their attention off the electron and quantum physics, and they put it on the wave of possibility. That's what creation is. And once that energy hits the heart, the heart starts getting very organized. They're in love with the experience, and they want the moment to last. And when you see those two hemispheres come together in that psychic union, you can walk from the computer around and look at that person. And there are tears of joy rolling down their face. They feel connected to something greater. They are so whole that it is impossible for them to want. How could you want when you're whole? And I call that the natural state of being. That's who we really are. And we no longer feel separate. And the moment you step out of the way, that autonomic nervous system that's giving you life says, she's gone, let's clean house. Because the autonomic nervous system is self-organizing. And it steps in and creates order where there's disorder. We've had people stand up 
that have had pain their entire life have no pain at all. And of course, their first words are, I can't believe it. it wasn't me that did this. It was the power within me that did it. And so then finding the sweet spot of the generous present moment every single day of your life, the word meditation, the actual literal translation of the word means to become familiar with. That's what it means. So if you're becoming familiar with your unconscious thoughts, and now you are so conscious of them, so familiar with them that you would never go unconscious again, you are in meditation to know thyself. If you can become aware of your automatic habits and behaviors and become so aware of what comes out of your mouth or how you act, that you are so conscious and so familiar with those states, you would never go unconscious again. And if you can observe those emotions in your meditation, or you're frustrated and impatient, and you keep settling your body back down into the present moment, and you're not letting your body be your mind any longer, sooner or later, the body, the servant, the animal, is going to surrender to a new mind. And when it does, there's a liberation of energy. And the body is no longer enslaved to the familiar past or trying to predict the future. And the absence of that emotional addiction is called joy. And there is a liberation of energy that takes place in the body, and we've measured it. And when that occurs then, now you're ready to create from a state of wholeness. And then as you begin to decide what thoughts you do want to put your attention on and you repeat them and get clear on them and you fire and wire those circuits in your brain, it's going to begin to become familiar to you. And as you begin to rehearse who you're going to be when you open your eyes and you play it over and over, you begin to install the hardware in your brain. And if you keep doing it, the hardware becomes a software program. And if you can cultivate an elevated emotion before the actual experience, you are teaching your body what that future is going to feel like in the present moment. And you're signaling new genes and new ways that make new proteins, preparing your body for the event. And if you keep practicing, cultivating those elevated emotions, it will begin to become familiar to you. So the process of change is unlearning and relearning. It's breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing a new self. It's pruning synaptic connections in neuroscience and sprouting new connections. It's unfiring and unwiring and refiring and rewiring. It's losing your mind and creating a new one. It's taking those emotions, body as the mind, and reconditioning the body to a new mind. It's pulling your energy out of the past and investing your energy into the future. And wouldn't you agree then, if your life is controlling how you think and feel, if your environment or your personal reality is reminding you of who you are as a personality, and the environment is that strong, and your body, which has been conditioned to be the mind emotionally, is running its programs and its habits, and you're so programmed into the predictable future because of the familiar past, because you've done it over and over again for years on end, wouldn't it be a good idea to close your eyes and eliminate the external environment?